All right, here we are in our small group uh, study series uh, entitled uh, How to Love Somebody That You Hate. And this is lesson number five in that series. And the title of this lesson is Never Means Never. So we're, uh, we're building a strategy that will enable us to love those that you know, we can't stand. Everybody has some of those in their life and we're trying to figure out how to, how to obey Jesus's command to you know, love our enemy. So there's a strategy, there's a way to do this. And we said the first step is uh, to bless instead of curse. In other words, when I think of my enemy and I'm tempted to review their faults you know, in my mind or uh, what they've done to hurt my feelings, instead I substitute prayer on their behalf instead of uh, negative thoughts. Uh, when tempted to speak badly uh, about them, I try to say nothing at all. And sometimes this is difficult. Sometimes you begin by saying less than you would normally say, and uh, you kind of work your way down to, uh, to zero. Step number two, walk a mile in their shoes. Uh, instead of concentrating on what they have done, try uh, focusing on the why they may have done or said what they said to uh, have said to, uh, to harm you. Uh, instead of relating in great detail to others why you don't like them and what they've done to you to make you dislike them, try relating why you think they may have acted in the way that they uh, have. Uh, understanding brings a sympathy uh, and sympathy uh, makes it easier for us to arrive at the, uh, the goal line, of course, which is uh, forgiveness. Um, forgiving the, the other person may not change them, but it does change you and it does help you uh, live with them. And of course, it helps you live with your own conscience and live with God in peace. All right, today we're going to review the third step in our uh, strategy, and that is never take revenge. Uh, in Romans chapter 12, verses 17, Paul says, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. So in this passage, Paul says quite emphatically, actually, that we are not to take revenge. Note that uh, uh, each of these verses begins with the word never. And so there's no misunderstanding here. We are never to take revenge, never to take justice into our own hands. Now, this is a different concept for us in the, in the West because so much of our you know, movies, entertainment, books, whatever stories are based on uh, the type of hero who, uh, who does take revenge, who does this very thing. Uh, cowboys, you know, uh, taking the law into their own hands and hunting down those who you know, hurt their family or something. Or macho men or macho women or superheroes who take the law into their own hands and you know, they take care of business. We, we idolize these, these people. But this is contrary to God's views and God's commands. The Bible says that we are never, again, not hard to understand, we're never to take vengeance, never to become the judge, the jury, and the executioner or the self-appointed one anyways. Now, this is not to say that uh, vengeance all by itself is a, is a bad thing. Uh, a vengeance, which is the, the desire to see justice and punishment accomplished, this desire is not bad in itself. It's simply not our responsibility. It's not our job. This task belongs exclusively to God and to those entities that God appoints for this ta these tasks, you know, the government, the police, the military, so on and so forth. You can, you can hope and you can pray for it and you can work to promote it, but you can't appoint yourself as the enforcer. Of, of justice. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, we, uh, those of us who are uh, pro-life, if you wish, we're against abortion, uh, we can march, you know, in the street to protest uh, abortion. We can, uh, we can vote for politicians uh, as a preacher and teacher. I can preach sermons on it and teach on it and so on and so forth. These are all acceptable ways to, um, uh, to, to fight against uh, the pro-choice or against uh, uh, abortion. Uh, uh, but it's not okay to go and bomb an abortion clinic. It's not okay to go and harm uh, abortion providers. That, you know, we don't have the right 
uh, to do that. You know, uh, Jesus said never, and that means never uh, take uh, vengeance. Also not taking vengeance doesn't mean uh, to be passive. I mean, just because we don't punish or take revenge doesn't mean we do absolutely nothing. Uh, uh, aggressive good, um, a prayer for justice, active forgiveness. Uh, these are our tasks as Christians, as spiritually minded people. Not taking revenge is a way of expressing your faith. In other words, in doing this, you are saying that you believe God's word and you trust him to execute justice in his good time and in his good way. Just like the return of Jesus, justice seems slow in coming at times, but it will be perfect and cause us to rejoice when it finally does come. All right, another question, why, why should we let God judge? You know, all of this is easy to say, but so very hard to do when faced with someone who is getting away with offending us or hurting us or someone we love. We should never take revenge and leave the justice and punishment to the Lord, but why? A couple of reasons. First of all, vengeance, as I mentioned before, vengeance is not, our, um, is not in our jurisdiction. God could have given us this right, just as he gave us the right to manage and exploit the, uh, the, uh, the uh, creation, but he, but he didn't. Uh, he maintains this right for himself alone. And again, as I say, for those he appoints to this task. Another reason why let God judge? Uh, well, the person may repent. You ever think of that? Uh, your judgment, your punishment might interfere with someone eventually coming to the Lord. You know, a good example of this, many years ago, there was a, a serial killer, his name was Jeffrey Dahmer, and he was a mass murderer, uh, you know, and he was a cannibal, he was just a terrible person. You know, he was a, 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 he was a homosexual, uh, he, he lured young men into to his apartment to, for, for sex, and then he would, uh, he would murder them and cannibalize them. He was, it was a terrible, terrible thing. And, uh, he was captured eventually and tried and he went to jail. Uh, well, uh, not long after he had been in uh, prison, uh, he was murdered uh, by someone in jail, you know, according to, the, uh, according to the code there, where child molesters and the like are eliminated by other inmates. Well, thankfully, uh, a member of the church had sent him a Bible correspondence course. And several months before uh, his death, uh, he studied uh, the Bible and eventually he was baptized uh, you know, in jail uh, before uh, someone else decided to take matters into their own hands and uh, execute him in prison. Uh, this terrible sinner, this man who had done terrible things, received the forgiveness of, of Christ um, uh, only months before he was uh, murdered by someone else. So you never know what God's plans can be and, and you shouldn't interfere with his plans by taking justice into your own hands. And thirdly, why let God judge? Well, you need to remember, you're going to be judged yourself uh, one day. The Bible says never. So when you make an exception to this rule, you break God's command. Uh, it's ironic that those who set themselves up as judge and executioner automatically bring down judgment upon themselves. You know, the old story of uh, David and Saul, you know, in the Old Testament, David, uh, King David and the first king uh, of the United Kingdom was uh, Saul. And uh, this, the story of these two people is a wonderful example of this refusal to take revenge into one's hands. Um, if you're familiar with the story of Saul and David, Saul, uh, you know, eventually became jealous of David's popularity with the people. And time after time, Saul uh, tried to attack David, spoke against him, uh, was always trying to execute him. And David escaped to all of his traps. But David always responded to Saul with kindness and patience, even refusing to harm the king when he had perfect opportunities to do so. And he understood why. He had not been given the right to uh, you know, take matters into uh, his own hands, to take justice into his own hands and, and, and kill the king. You know, he always knew that this was God's responsibility. So 
David understood that in dealing with an enemy, it was best to leave the matter of revenge in God's hands, no matter what the provocation. He knew that in doing this, there would be perfect justice. Uh, he knew that he would incur no guilt for himself. And also if there would be a chance for change, God himself would bring it about. All right, so there's uh, our lesson for uh, today. I've got some discussion questions for you for the small group, uh, if you divide up into small group for your uh, discussion time, and I'll give you those in a moment. We'll see you next time. Question number one, in your own personal conflicts, why do you want revenge? Question number two, have you ever taken revenge? What happened? How did you feel? What were the results? Question number three, what are some ways that we take revenge in the church? Question number four, have you ever had a Saul in your life? If so, how could you have been more like David when attacked?